Hello everybody, good day to you all. My name is Marlies and welcome to my channel, Marley Design. Um, today we have a special guest, uh, Louise, welcome. <laughs> Hi. Uh, for the ones who have already seen our videos over the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, we have made some content. I went to Austria to visit Louise and uh, we made some content with some distress paints from Tim Holtz. And for today's project, uh, we were also inspired by Tim. Uh, he has released, um, it's like re-released, isn't it? Yeah, it's like re-released. <laughs> uh, some of those paints, back from the vault, they call it. And uh, that gave us the idea out of his demo uh, to, to play along with some paints and some texture paste. So maybe, Louise, you want to tell something about your materials that you're going to use and yeah. some techniques. Perhaps we should first say that this is not the re-release. So no. these are not the retired paints. This is just what I had in my stash and what we are going to use today. And that's also something that you, of course, can do. You don't have to use those colors that are just, uh, that just came back. You can use what you have. Um, I guess you could also do this with like normal acrylic paint. It doesn't yep. have to be distress paint, but this has some advantages um, because this is some kind of a special paint. You will see that during this video series, hopefully. <laughs> We try our best to show uh, the advantages of those paints. Okay, so um, we saw Tim demoing live with the paints and he made some gorgeous backgrounds. One of those backgrounds were uh, created with um, uh, a stencil, some texture paste. And after the drying time of the texture paste, he has put on the stencil uh, back on top uh, over the texture paste again. And he went over all those raised areas with different kinds of colors of paint. And that is our inspiration for today. After applying the paint colors to the raised areas, he also grunged it up a little bit with some crayons. This stencil has the number THS037. I don't know if your viewers are also curious about the numbers, but I think we should mention yeah, that. Yeah, that is great. Yep. <laughs> so this was the one that he has used in his video. Yeah. And we have made some thoughts um, about which stencil you could use if you don't have this. And if you don't want to do exactly the same that he has done or, of course, someone else where you could get some inspiration from. And we thought that a stencil that has relatively much negative space here would be good because this like grunge effect in the end could come out really well with such a pattern. But we also thought, what if we don't have such a stencil? So Marlies has a similar stencil to this one. The number is? The number is T H. S O uh, S um, zero five six, and this is similar because it has like circles, circle shapes, yeah. But as you can see, those negative spaces are way smaller or, or a little bit smaller than here. But this is like our direct reference or something like that, something similar to what he has used, and I have chosen this stencil to use today the number is THS 077 and I thought what happens if you for example don't have such an abstract stencil or you don't want to use that but you use something that has like an image like those flowers here and not a regular pattern nothing abstract I have no idea if that will work but I will try that and then we made a decision about the background as well, so we want to change Tim's idea a little bit by using some stamps for the background. But our first step will be, um, step one is adding the paint. Yep. And step two will be uh, about adding the stamps. And we will talk you through that uh, in the second step. Um, for now, I'm going to add some paints and I'm going to work in some green tones. I have in front of me the forest moss. I have the bundled sage. There is uh, some 
old paper and I would also like to add some brown tones and there is some walnut stain and ground espresso and vintage photo frayed burlap maybe and I will combine those colors. The color that I have chosen for my tag I want to go with yellow, some orange and brown in the end and as you can see I only have fossilized amber as a yellow here so um, perhaps it's a really good idea to not overthink the whole thing but sometimes it's good to just start with one color yeah. and then seeing how it looks and go on with the next one and just let it flow perhaps you will end up with turquoise instead of green yeah you will never you will never know because maybe uh, when you see your product onto the paper it might um, give you another idea and the colors can change so I have put on two colors for now. I have forest moss on the top and I have some bundled sage on the bottom. And my applying technique will be very simple today. I'm just going to use uh, my fingers and just dab it on top of my tag. And uh, what is your applying technique for today, Louise? <laughs> Do you really think that I know what I'm doing here? No. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to get some marks from my brush to the tag and I'm realizing that it's really hard to get the edge of that. And at the same time I'm trying to mix the colors a little bit. I just said I want to use yellow but uh, this seems to turn out really red but that doesn't matter. <laughs> And I want to not like blend it into each other. You want to leave it separate. Yeah, a little bit separate. Mm. I want mm, I want to have this like pattern from the brush. The brush uh, strokes. Yeah, yeah. For now, my starting point uh, is two kind of green colors. But I can already see it's very green green, so I'm already in my head uh, thinking about what I can add to break the green uh, cycle. And uh, like I said in the beginning, I think and I'm leaning towards uh, a brown one. So that will be my next step for this adding process. Um, I'm going to take a look for some brown colors. Look. How cool frayed burlap and lumberjack plaid are going together. Yeah. That is really cool. Cool. And that's something that I probably, uh, yeah. Would not have discovered if only yes. for trying, right? Yes. Yeah. And also um, the frayed burlap and fossilized amber that makes a really nice mixture. Yeah, beautiful. And perhaps we should say... Um, that we are trying to get <clears throat> the background a little bit more muted and the colors that we are going to use later are a little bit more vibrant even if we are going to grunge them up. And now on my fingers I have the ground espresso there, so I'm going darker and darker um, and then uh, when we have the end result in just uh, a moment um, you might see that the background will turn a little bit darker and that is a reason why I thought about um, when we are talking about the texture paste uh, putting it through the, the stencil that it is a raised area and I want that to be uh, more of a vibrant color so it will definitely catch your eyes and I would like to <clears throat> mention something about those paints that I really love um, perhaps you could see how much I went through the different colors and they are not really like mixing. You don't get mud with those paints. I mean, of course, they are mixing if you go over them over and over again, but you don't get brown. And that is, I think it's, it's amazing. Here, for example, this yellow on the red you can still see both colors and at the same time with going over it you get something like a mixture but it's not like a muddy mixture. 
I will hold my tag up to the camera a little bit closer so you can see how I blended all the colors and um, yeah that you can still see there are some darker areas and there are also some lighter areas um, so we can find out later um, how the texture paste and the painting will hold on those uh, different kind of colors because I want to have some more of this color but I'm realizing that if I do this wet and wet, it doesn't work so well. So I will just quickly dry this. Oh, I will do uh, a little bit of uh, adding so you can dry. I add a little drop of a lighter color. If I see this, I think I really like this cloudy feeling. And I'm thinking, what do you think? Can I perhaps put some frayed burlap here, but then spritz some water to let that flow a little bit, to mm. only have a few of these brush stroke areas? Yeah, because not, not the whole tag has to be with a brush stroke. You can uh, uh, show that partially, so you can do that. Yeah, I will start with something like this, to have like a little bit more color in one spot. I have never done that before, but perhaps it can work. And then while Louise is also building up her layers. I am going to try to build up some, also some extra layers, and I'm just staying in the same color uh, palette. Uh. I will show you again. I think I will leave it like uh, this. You can see some lighter areas, you can see some darker areas, and of course even later on it's a mixed media tag, so you can go back in and add some more layers or mediums. So this is for me a good base for now. How did the first round go, Louise? Um, yeah, first I really liked the combination of lumberjack plaid and um, frayed Fred burlap, and when I look at them here, I really like it. But with diluting the frayed burlap, this fog came over lumberjack plaid and that turns it into a really purplish pink. And I don't like that so much anymore. So I'm trying to do something instead of uh, driving myself crazy with that paintbrush. I'm just doing it like this. And I will add some more of the fossilized right. ember to oh. the edges because I think that's a better combination especially with that red and the orange that I got from you know yeah mixing that but this is also the beauty uh, of those distress paints that you can layer and layer and layer so if you are not happy or not satisfied or you drop something on your paper you can change it uh, again and again and again so yeah. that is also the beauty uh, of these paints and now i lose my pattern from the brush strokes but i'm totally fine with that because to be honest when i saw it i really didn't like it look, look that is it's not it's like this looks like a really weird graffiti kind of thing and the contrast makes it nearly like neon and I don't like that. But I must say as an underlayment for now to put the fossilized amber on top, you can see here it's very, very pretty. Yeah, yeah. And here it still comes through yeah. and I still can see a little bit of that. Yeah, that is really cool. That is not so bad. No, really nice. It still looks like uh, it was done with this original technique that I've started with because here you can still see the pattern of the brush strokes and it looks totally different to yours yeah totally. even if I also have like blended it with the brayer yeah I love it we are having some drying time right now because your uh, tags need to be dry for the next step so we're going to have a little break and we will be right back with our dried tags coffee 
Coffee. Tea? No, tea. <laughs> Okay, so guys, we are back. Our tags have been dried. Uh, we have got out some stamping uh, supplies. I have a Tim Holtz stamp, the Barbels stamp, and I have also a Distress Embossing Glaze, the Walnut Stain. This will be partially uh, imprinted in the background on some corners, and uh, I will put the Walnut Stain on and heat set my embossing powder. And Louise, what are you going to do? I'm going to tell you the number of this stamp. Oh yeah, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> it's CMS449 and I have chosen <clears throat> this stamp from the tiny prints. The number is CMS460. I know that this is really, really busy and the pattern is really small, relatively concrete compared to the stamp that Marlies has chosen. But I want to try what happens when you use such a busy stamp. So we have chosen these because this is abstract. It's like mm, it doesn't matter how it comes out because it always looks great when it's embossed. Even if the stamp impression gets perhaps a little bit not so good. But this is perhaps something that could turn into a, f a fail <laughs> when it turns out not so concrete. But that's exactly, exactly the reason why I want to try it out to see if it's possible with every stamp. For the embossing, I want to use um, this <coughs> golden embossing powder. I am also wondering how this will work with this like tiny stamp. It's really delicate. And this is the normal golden embossing powder by Ranger. It's not the fine one. And I'm not totally sure if that will work, but we will see. My go-to for now is the bubble stamp. Uh, I'm not going to stamp it all up with the embossing ink. I am just going to choose some beautiful corners that will work for my project. And I'm not going to stamp the whole tag. And you are going to use um, Distress Embossing Ink? Yes, I do. And I use the um, Distress Embossing Dabber. I mean, I think the medium is the same, but you see, you can um, apply it in a different way. What do you like better for doing this? Uh, most of the time for stamping or embossing with a stamp, I'm using the uh, embossing ink pad. And for more uh, roughness and larger areas without stamps, I am using the dabber. I'm not totally sure because sometimes um, I have the feeling that I can handle better when I use this, mm, yeah. especially for yeah those portions of stamps. I can imagine better what I want to do. Um, and if I have something that has to go like really fast, then I like to use that because it's for me it's easier. Easier, yeah, faster to to handle. You see uh, that I have changed the direction of my tag. I have added the glaze to this corner and now I want to go to the bottom corner but it's more easy to, to twist your uh, paper and then um, you have some free space to stamp with the ink. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful or not? I think that turned out really, really nice. But here on the bottom, I think I will get a fail now because I realized that I have moved the stamp while stamping. That was an accident. Oh, it did move? Stamping platform would definitely be a good, I Ooh, good idea. But I think... I thought it would be like really messed up here. But I think it's only the problem here. But the, this is the edge. okay. Yeah. yeah, it looks really This edge cool. is a little bit weird, but it's good that it is on the edge, then it doesn't matter. And here I think it's good. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Okay, let's see. But let's see how it turns out. And I can also, I'm just thinking, I can also just do it like this to get perhaps a little bit off from that so that it gets more delicate so that I have not too much powder on it and 
I'm also just thinking when you have a problem like I just had here um, and you messed up your stamping, you can still stencil over that with the paste later and cover that up. Yeah, there are more possibilities, yeah. But I nearly can't look at my own tag because how freaking good is that looking? I mean, <laughs> what the heck? Here we go. Uh, yeah, I really, I really like this stamp. It's beautiful. It's uh, a, a little bit irregular, which I really like, and it really fits uh, a grungy theme. And of course, uh, parts of this will be um, covered with the paste. But yeah, it's all about building layers and seeing what uh, and looking at what is happening. I will be waiting for Louise when she uh, is done with the heat setting of her embossing powder. And then we will turn to mine. And I'm really surprised about this. I mean, wow. it's always the same with like golden embossing powder or everything that is like shiny. When I hold it like this, you can see the contrast really, really well. When I turn it like this you can see the pattern gets like more loose more not so recognizable as what it is because of the glossiness of the powder but i mean it's up to you how you want to look at it but it's really concrete i would say and even here on the bottom where i thought and uh, not not only thought i have moved the stamp but you can still see the pattern relatively clearly but a stamping platform would definitely be a good idea to use for stamping this. Okay, so let me show you um, my uh, embossing glaze, how it, it has melted. And um, yeah, I really like the irregular pattern and it looks great. I love the grunginess, I love the color and uh, yeah, the embossing glaze is magic. Uh, let's go to the next part and that is uh, applying some paste uh, through a stencil. So we already showed you guys what kind of stencil we have chosen to do so. And the paste that I'm going to push through the stencil with a palette knife is the Distress Grit Paste Translucent. And um, how about you Louise? What kind of paste did you have? I would like to use the Texture Paste Matte. So this is going to be opaque. But it really doesn't matter if it's um, a translucent paste like the grid paste or if it's opaque because we will cover it up with paint later. But we want to try out different mediums for this step. And we thought that the grid paste on Marlise's tag would work better because the background is already relatively like grungy and this earthy tones, I think that works really well with the grid paste. And for this floral image I want to use a paste that is more smooth on the surface and I don't want to lose the attention to my background which is already really delicate yeah if that makes sense yeah <laughs> perhaps so I'm just placing my stencil on top of the tag um, I am always looking for a good placement and that means I do not want I'm not going to cover the whole stencil with paste, I just want uh, a diagonal line. So I'm going to start in the left upper uh, top and I work my way down a little bit to the right um, corner down below. Um, and I do not want this edge to be on the edge of the tag, I want to offset it a little bit. So I'm going in with my palette knife in an angle. I will push the, um, the product a little bit on to the stencil. And then um, in an angle I will scrape it to the bottom. And if you have scraped away too much, then pick up a little bit more of the paste and go over it uh, again. And of course, always try to keep your uh, stencil into the right place. And that is also the reason why uh, Louise um, made the choice to tape it down. 
Um, so you have one less thing to pay attention to because all the attention goes into the scraping of the paste uh, through the stencil. So I will pick my stencil up right now. I will put it to the side and then I will hold up the tag towards the camera just so you can show how my pattern uh, looks like right now. Wow. Oh. It is beautiful. <clears throat> but I can already see what I don't like. The only thing that you have to what you can think about if you like this piece otherwise you have the chance right now to remove it if you think it's not um, in a good place but the rest is really really well done wow <laughs> but when i look at it mm -hmm. i can see like there's um like a path going through here yeah this line is really like harsh and this as well. Mm -hmm. I don't have such a nice smooth flow flowing, yeah. Yeah, between the stamping and this. And I guess with um letting this dry and putting paint on it, it doesn't get better, but perhaps I can get a smooth thing here uh by adding the crayon and smearing that a little bit more. But for now, people, we have put the paste on. Uh, we have to let it air dry. So these pieces will go to the side and dry properly. And when they are dried, we will come back to you. So see you in a bit. Another coffee? Another yeah. tea? Yeah, yeah. again. <laughs> Our next step is to put our stencil that we have used uh, already with the paste. We are going to put it back on there. And um, well, if you want to uh, keep it in place, you can uh, use a little bit of uh, tape to do so. Uh, just to make sure that your stencil is in the right position. And that you are only uh, going to hit the raised areas with the paste and the paint. And well, just try not to um, soak the paint uh, underneath. So they are taped down. We are going to do some painting on top of the paste. And um, I want a, a bit of a vibrant green color. And maybe you can also already see over here that I created one. Um, I have used <clears throat> some selvaged patina in combination with some fossilized amber. And that turned out in this green. And that is what I am going to use on top of the paste. So what about you, Louise? I've decided to go with vintage photo. That's perhaps a little bit like a traditional color, I would say. But I already have a really, like, bam background. So I thought that could be good to use a brown on top. And I really like vintage photo in combination with gold. <laughs> so I'm uh, mixing my paints to get uh, a vibrant green color. Because I already work with some green tones. I want my top color to be more vibrant, but the background is more like forest-like. Um, I really want this to pop, so later on we are going to do an extra layer on top of that. I can grunge it, uh, I can grunge it up.
So of course you saw that we have sped up this piece of a video because it would take a long time uh, just for us to paint in the things. We took it uh, quite easy this time and quite uh, <laughs> quite slow. Um, but with the result that we are going to show you right now. So we are going to pull off the tape. Oh, it worked. Ah! Oh, wow. Oh! <laughs> Beautiful. I will hold this up closer to the camera. And this is for now how my tag looks. These are the painted areas. And I'm going to set it to the side to dry. So it has a good dry and basic layer for our next step. And Louise? Oh, wow. <coughs> Perhaps you can see that there's not only the brown from Vintage Photo, but also some yellow in the middle of the flowers. Um, during my process, I've decided that I wanted to use some fossilized amber additionally for the center of the flowers. Louise ha had some um, paint running underneath her stencil and she's finding a way to um, get a solution for that so it will still be uh, nice uh, to look at. And what she found out is that when she puts some water in the middle of the flowers, um, just let the water sit and soak in just a little bit and dab it off with a cloth or maybe a paper towel. Uh, you will pick up some paint and the middle area of the flowers, or like here, the stem, um, will be lighter than. It also gives a nice gradation in color because you can see it will turn from light to middle to darker. And yeah, really nice effect. And that way um, I could have skipped the step with the fossilized amber paint because I have lifted that up nearly completely now. But this is also the reason why you have to try things out because when you are too scared to play around and have your creative time you will never have noticed this solution or this maybe a technique. Yeah. So that is why it's very important just to play and try. So next I will put a thin layer of collage medium to my tag so that I am later on able to smear the crayon that I want to use to grunge this up. Uh, if I wouldn't put collage medium on top, it would be not so handy. I, I couldn't smear the crayon so well. Marlies, would you like to explain why you don't do that step on your tag? Yes, um, I have used the grit paste and it is already quite a texture in there. It is, well, gritty, so it will hold on to the crayon when you put it on. Um, so I think I will not have a problem uh, uh, with, uh, with not adding the collage medium. That also means we are looking for a totally different result with your tag and my tag. I mean, not only color-wise, but also texture-wise. Yes, and product-wise is also different. And that is all, uh, uh, that has the reason so we can show you and explain to you what we did, what kind of products we used, and how it turned out uh, as an end result. So the collage medium has dried. And now we are going to take a Distress Crayon, in this case the color Walnut Stain for both of our tags and we will just scribble over, <laughs> I'm afraid, <laughs> over the stenciled area, just like this. And then I will go over this with my finger. We are just going to do this step a little bit separate uh, so we can see the result about grunging it up and because uh, also the technique is slightly different so you will see uh, really a good look at uh, how it turns out with this beautiful flower.
How about pressure, Louise? Can you mm -hmm. tell us about how you are going to um, uh, smear? Is it lightly or heavy pressure? At the moment, I'm pressing re relatively hard because I'm realizing that I that the crayon was like really soft. Um, it's a little bit warm here at the moment uh, compared to the other days, and I'm just realizing that I have really much in there. And I can't smear it around so well, even if I press a lot. So I'm taking my paper towel that is a little bit like... Is it wet or damp? No, it is damp. Yeah, okay. So that I can um, bring out the detail a little bit better, because I want to have, yeah, this grunge there, but not too extreme. And if you realize that you have taken off too much, you can of course always go back in with your crayon and add more. And it's also the beauty about the crayon that you can pick it up again with a damped towel. Yeah. So no worries when you put on too much, you can take it away again. So this has nearly dried, I mean the crayon has nearly dried, but I'm not totally satisfied with the result yet. Because I think I can do an even better job to the inside of the flowers and lighten them up a little bit more, even if they are really nice <laughs> already. But I want to try some different crayons. The one is antique linen and the other one is picket fence to light the center of the flower up a little bit. And after I have done that, hopefully with success, I will take some white acrylic paint that I have watered down to make some splatters for more detail. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about my next step. Uh, of course, uh, Louise already did the crayon on her tag. I also got out some crayons. I have the walnut stain. And because I have some distress paint in the background, the forest moss, I thought it would be also nice to use the crayon forest moss um, to put on top of the paste. What I would like to do um, is to use the walnut stain more on those sides where this is already uh, has a brown color and on this side and then way, uh, work my way in to the paste and maybe use the forest moss more in the middle. I'm just rubbing the crayon slowly on top of the grit paste. And my technique further will be just to smear it out with my fingers. And let's see how that will work. I'm going to pick up the forest moss crayon right now and I will add something, um, some bits and pieces in the middle in this this area and let's see if that will even make uh, makes a difference So my acrylic paint splatters have dried and now I'm thinking 
I want to roughen up the edges a little bit and then I want to ink them with archival ink ground espresso. What am I doing here? And for the distressing on the edges I'm using this tool. Alternatively you could also use some scissors or what I also found out you can also make the edges a tiny little bit wet and then uh, scratch over that with a ruler. That would also work. Okay, so for my tag, um, Louise already did the splattering. Uh, we got out a little jar with some white acrylic paint uh, diluted with a little bit of water. So I'm going to make some splatters on top. And of course, we also want some roughness around the edges. So I'm going to show you the roughness with some scissors. Uh, it's a little bit different, but will give uh, quite the same effect as Louise. But um, then you can see if there is a difference and how it will look. I just saw a big blob on um, the tag the, with the white acrylic paint and while it's still wet and you do not like it uh, you can still uh, smear it away a little bit so that is what I just uh, did. There was a big blob over here and right now it is gone. For roughening up your edges with a scissor, this is how I hold my scissor and I only use one blade to scrape along the sides. The color that I'm going to use on those rough edges is the archival ink, black soup. And I'm not going to do that with a blending tool because I want it to be, well, quite bold. So I'm going to use the ink pad itself and scrape along the sides. When you see there are still white parts in the rough uh, edges after you add the first layer of ink, this black suit color, and you think there are still too many white uh, spots, just go back in and add another layer just to fill in uh, yeah, those, those white areas. I think... I don't know what you think and I don't want to say anything bad about your tech. Yeah, I really like it. But in the beginning, do you remember when we talked about using such a whimsical detailed. and detailed and like really yeah, delicate this stamp? This turned out way better. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It really I mean, is. I've just said that when we had our break that I in the beginning liked yours way, way better, especially because of the colors in the background. Forest Moss, my favorite color. And I was like, with mine, okay, it will turn out like a fail. We said that in the beginning that we would expect that this wouldn't work so well. But yeah. now it's it's like yeah, it has it switched. Worked. Yeah, it switched. It switched. Around. But I'm still thinking, do you know what? Um, I think this can stand f for its own. Yeah, it doesn't need. It has a focal point already with the stenciling. But this, imagine you had a butterfly or something. Yeah. I mean, not such naked. No, with of some course. Red maybe below, with for some, example. yeah, with some layering that would but be awesome. That is crazy. No, it's, it's, it can still be a very, very good tag. But uh, in the beginning, we really thought this would work immediately. And that could be a fail, but right now mm -hmm. the tables are turned. Yeah, yeah, this turned out awesome. And this is like, it needs some extra love and attention. Yeah, but now? Yeah, it's done. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> but without antennas, it wouldn't work for me. But you can imagine how it would I, look. Yeah, of really course. Really crazy. Yeah. 
So that also means never give up because um, sometimes people give up way, way too soon because they think it is not going anywhere. But it can. It can go somewhere. Uh, Just, yeah, hold on and just pull through and keep adding and just maybe lay it to the side sometimes. Let it rest and come back to it uh, after uh, a couple of hours or a day. Um, yeah, it's still workable. You can still still manage to make something very beautiful out of it. Yeah, and if you see something in a video, <clears throat> so I've just taken back this stencil that Tim has used in his video. So this is relatively close to each other, like we said in the beginning as yeah. well. And um, even if you had the same stencil, <laughs> yeah. it could turn out like this. Yeah. And if you say, okay... I don't have that stencil. I only have, for example, flowers. That is not like an abstract pattern. It can turn out like this. So, as you said, Marlies, don't give up. Just use what you have and try to get the best out of it. Yeah, and maybe uh, when you have put it to the side and come back to it, uh, for example, for right now, uh, I have distanced myself uh, from the tag for a moment mm-hmm. because Louise and I are discussing this project. Uh, but while I'm watching it right now, I already have the feeling, ooh, I could also add, because in the background there are some greens, but also some um, browns. Maybe this is way too green maybe I can still add a little bit of brownish paint and just rub it um, on top of the paste with like the dry brushing technique. So it will only hold maybe to some of the little speckled raised areas, but then maybe we can bring the colors in closer to each other. But uh, that is also, yeah, just only you can do that when you put it aside to the side for maybe a moment or a couple of hours and get back in it with a fresh a fresh view yeah and what is here with my whole reinforcements that i just made for you oh especially yeah. for you yeah oh <laughs> yeah especially for me <laughs> well of course your reinforcement can be placed on the whole um we uh well we no louise made me some uh she had some just white ones Uh, She made some in brown, uh, some darker browns and with some black suit just to see what would fit uh, perfectly or the best on this tag. And I think because of all my edges are quite dark and also all the rough sides are quite dark, I am going for the darker one. So I will stick it on for right now and see if it will hold. And um, if it will not, of course, do not worry. You can always get back in there with a little dot of glue and glue it down to the tag. This was our video for today. We hope you got some inspiration out of it. Um, Louise and I are going to have multiple videos with some distress paint techniques. Uh, so we hope you will stay tuned. I will put Louise's uh, channel below in the description box. And we would like to invite you to join us uh, on our adventure. And uh, check out our playlist. So thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.